What is going on guys and welcome back to another video. Now today we are going to be discussing raw video. That is a very good question and raw video is quite confusing. So bear with me. With a camera such as this, a Canon 70D, a DSLR, um, one of the options in the menu is to take raw photos. Now, raw photos are when you take a photo and, oh, I don't have a card in this camera. So I've just taken a photo and what it's done is it hasn't just saved a JPEG, it has saved a CR2 file, which is Canon's raw file, I'm not quite sure what Nikon's is. Um, but basically that means in my editing program later on in um, Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever I use, those are the two best ones. Um, I can adjust the levels, the ISO, the exposure, everything after I've taken the photo. So I don't have to worry about all the settings as much as I did. Also means that I can get the most out of the highlights and the most out of the shadows. Raw video is much the same, but a higher frame rate. So with this camera, the highest frame rate I can do is seven frames per second until the buffer kicks in. And then it starts writing to the card instead of writing to the RAM, because the RAM can only hold a couple of photos. Normally, you do have to pay quite a lot to be able to record raw video. Um, you can get something called Magic Lantern, which lets you record raw video on a DSLR. Um, I'm not sure about um, other cameras, but I do know that you can record raw if you install Magic Lantern with the 5D Mark III. I'm not quite sure about the 70D. I haven't tried. <clears throat> but if you want real raw, you do have to splash out rather a large amount. So I have here a Blackmagic production camera. This is a 4K raw video camcorder. It is a cinema camera with a very dirty screen. Let's get you all cleaned up, yo. Yeah. Right, so in the menu, we turn it on, and it comes up with here. We go into the menu, into the settings, into the record bit, and here we've got 4K ProRes HD, HQ. You can't read it, but I, I promise you. We can then click over to 4K RAW, and it changes the dynamic range to film, so you get the widest dynamic range. I'll talk about that in a second. So once you've hit OK, it restarts the camera, and it begins. I can record some RAW right now. There we go. There we go, that was five and a half seconds of RAW video. I have got a 480 gigabyte SSD in this camera, and it's letting me record about 20 minutes of RAW video. So. It takes up a huge amount of space because the way that raw video works is that instead of recording a video file, it records an audio file and then it takes loads of pictures. So it takes 30 pictures every single second in raw. So like I'm taking a picture on here in raw, but 30 every single second. You can change the frame rate to 24 or 23.97 or something. Um, but 30 is quite a nice frame rate, unless you're making a film in which 24 is the standard, you know that. I'm, I'm filming 30 right now. The reason these files are so big is because each individual image file is carrying so much information so you can change it later. But that does mean that I have to buy a lot of SSDs. Now this camera records to these, you may have seen these in your computer, it's an SSD, it's a alternative, a faster alternative to hard drives. Each of these is 480 gigabytes. Now I don't shoot RAW that often, so I don't need all of these, but it's good to have them in case, because I, I think most of these are full right now. The reason you'll get better quality out of this one is because it also has a, a larger sensor, but we'll go into that into a different video. And then when you put it into your editing program, which I'll show you in a minute, it syncs the audio and the image files automatically. Superb. My cat's asleep. Do you want to see him? Just say hi. 
You look like one of those clocks in that art picture thingy. I love you. Now, there are a couple of different alternatives to RAW. The GoPro gives you an option to film in a format called ProTune. ProTune is like RAW, but takes up less space. It gives you a higher dynamic range, and dynamic range, again, I'll go into in a different video if you need me to. Um, dynamic range is highlights and the shadows, more detail. So, that is one alternative, ProTune. I'm not sure if any other things have it except for the GoPro, but that does, it's good. Another alternative to RAW video is just shooting in what is known as a log profile. So something that is incredibly flat, which gives you a really big dynamic range um, and lets you color correct it better. An example of this is this video right now. I am shooting in something called Vlog L, which is a GH4 uh, format. Um, it's a picture profile where everything looks super dull. Um, but it also means that I can get a huge amount of um, dynamic range from this window here, otherwise it would be completely blown out. Um, and the shadows, because all of these are black and under here there's no light getting to them, um, they'd be completely sort of blacked out. But now I've got like 12 or 13 stops of dynamic range, which is the same as this, cinema camera, which is, it's pretty impressive. So that is a good alternative to RAW because it means that I can get a huge amount of detail with a really small amount of disk space. The huge main um, reason you'd want to shoot RAW is because when colour correcting, it gives you pretty much no dip in quality when editing the colours and the te temperature uh, or anything like that. Whereas when you're shooting normal video, this video here I'm shooting right now is at 100 megabits a second, which is a very large data rate. Um, but a camera like this gives you a whopping 900 gives you a whopping 900 megabits a second so that is just in ProRes just in ProRes not even raw this gives you 900 megabits a second which is amazing for color correcting um, not very uh, good for just everyday video it's what I did for most of my food videos that I've made but it's pretty nice I'm not quite sure about the data rate for the raw videos but I'll try and figure it out and tell you so let's get into how to edit raw videos. Um, if you're watching this video, um, you may be thinking about buying a camera that does raw video. Um, so this may be quite useful to you. Uh, there are two tools that I like to use. One of them I really don't like that much, so I use the other one. But we'll talk about that now. So now we're going to jump into this and I'm going to show you how to edit raw video. The first thing I'm going to show you is Resolve. Now this is an incredibly expensive piece of software. Um, but if you bet buy a Blackmagic camera, you get it for free uh, with the camera. So we're going to jump in and this is the clip that I have selected for you guys to see me edit. Um, what I'm going to do, well, basically because you've got a lot of highlights up here that are blown out. Um, there's a lot of intricate detail with the windows and the railings here. The shadows sort of underneath the balconies and around here the detail on the cliff face. This is in Australia, in Sydney. Um, I was going to use one of the Hong Kong shots I got, such as these ones here. Um, but none of them were... actually... None of them were amazing because a lot of them I took while sort of run and gun style. So they're either super dark or... That's actually in England. Um, none of these from the collection I got were actually that great. So we're going to go with this one from Australia. So what we're going to do is we're going to remember this, go into edit, we'll find it in this, um, in this side menu here. There we go. Right here, we can drag it into our timeline, into video. It's lagging a little bit because my computer is doing a lot right now. There we go. So we've got our video into our timeline. Then we go to color and in here we can download. So we're going to do this. You want it to be decoding in a full resolution. You want it to be your um, decode using the clip. So everything that you do. So this is completely manual now. Um, that's the way I like to do it anyway. And then in file, you want to go to your project settings and make sure you have the correct resolution because you won't, unless you've set it up correctly, which I didn't do, um, you won't. 
This is the resolution that the Blackmagic camera shoots in RAW. It's rather a strange resolution. It's slightly letterboxed. Um, <clears throat> but proper RAW is 4096 by 2160. So it's it's close, but it's not quite <laughs> it's not quite there. Um, anyway, so from here, what we can do is we can change the exposure. We can drop that all the way down. Um, you can change everything from here. So you can change your saturation to be super huge, but you don't really want that. So I'll just put that back. Um, if you go into color space, what it does is the way that we filmed it is we filmed it in BMD film. So this is what it looked like when I was filming it. But then if you translate it into Rec. 709, it looks like normal. So we can bring down the highlight slightly so we get more exposure. We get more detail in the sky. Um, we want a slight color boost because I like colorful video. Um, the contrast is a big, big thing you want to boost. <clears throat> it just adds depth to everything. And that, I mean, I'm not good. I'm not good at this program really at all. I need to learn more about it. Um, but what I'm going to show you next with Adobe Premiere, um, it's a lot easier. You can do different nodes here as well, so you can do lots of different layers. This is a beyond incredible program. This is an incredibly powerful program. You use this to make films, whatever. It's incredibly competent, but I'm not. So I'm not going to be using it because I don't like it that much. It's very confusing. Um, so we're going to go in, into Premiere now. Um, and what we're going to do is to import a file. What you do is, I've chosen this, I've renamed it as this, so I remember. Is you grab the first um, icon, the first file. Um, this entire video um, is about 2 gigabytes, so that's huge. And it has imported. So then we can go into new sequence from clip and it's brought it in you recognize this from resolve and one thing that's incredibly powerful is adobe after effects and once you've put this raw video into premiere they accept it completely now this is premiere pro cc 2015 so you can replace it with an adobe after effects composition now adobe after effects and Adobe Photoshop both use this camera raw program, which is amazing. I mean, already. So Adobe Photoshop and Adobe After Effects both use this camera raw program. Um, it's for handling raw video and in my opinion is one of the best programs out there that does it um, because if you remember how much detail we got from here we were blown out around here but we can zoom in oops we can bring down the exposure slightly and then we can bring down our highlights even more and look how much detail we get out of there now we weren't getting that much detail out of the other one and then we can pump up the contrast slightly to give more depth to this bit and everything. Bring down the white slightly. I do like the HDR sort of looks. So that might be sort of a bit like Marmite, isn't it? Um, the clarity. Let's put that up. I like the clarity. Clarity in photos looks amazing. And now you can do it in video. It's even better because look, look at that. But that doesn't look that great with you. Um, we want to pump up the contrast slightly more. Maybe bring the highlights down a little bit more. There we go. So that is a nice looking image. Uh, it's nicer than Resolve was giving me. I was probably doing it wrong. Um, but another thing you can do is if you have a look here, you've got color aberrations. Um, chromatic aberrations, sorry. Click that and they're gone. Easy as that. And chromatic aberrations are a huge problem with video because not many things can get rid of them. But After Effects can. And you hit OK when you're done. There was a lot more you can do in that camera roll, by the way. So I'll probably make a video about that at some point. But that's that. And basically, all you need to do is now I can just minimize this. And it's there. Now, I wouldn't recommend shooting raw for your entire film. But a large establishing shot, such as that one right there, um, is nice to do in raw. Because it gives you a really nice image. So we'll expand that so you guys can see it. And um, 
yeah, so that's how you edit raw video. There are other ways, there are much easier ways, there are different ways that I don't know. Uh, if you do, put them below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button below, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Uh, goodbye.